Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to talk about one of the worst cars ever made, the PT Cruiser. Now PT stands for personal transport. It turns out that Chrysler was trying to pull a fast one and call it a truck to try to raise the average cafe gas mileage in the United States, but uh, it didn't work out that way, so it's still classified as a car, as an SUV, not as a truck. Now these PT Cruisers were produced from 2001 to 2009 particular one is the 2003 and right from the gate big mistake every single one of those was produced in Mexico now here's why you should listen to Scotty and not to these nuts in magazines and award winners it was a claim that one of the best 10 cars of the years when it first came out and they called it the North American car of the year now come on now you come out with a new model it's made in Mexico how can you call it the car of the year one of the top 10 cars Come on, now yes, we do have the advantage of hindsight. It's now 2019. Well, at least it was when I made this video. In the future, it'll be later, but at least you'll understand. Back when they were making these things, they had no idea how they were gonna last. How can you call it car of the year, top 10 car? They just started making them. You got no idea what kind of qualities in them. Now, not being a Chrysler fan, even back in 2001, I didn't expect much from these things, but I really didn't expect them to be as bad as they came out. Let's start under the hood. Look at all the plastic crap, yes? Plastic everywhere. It cracks. It breaks. Look at the cheap faded bumper. <laughs> Supposed to be black. Now it's white. Now it's more than just superficial stuff with these. These engines are notorious for blowing head gaskets all the time. They overheat. I'd say at least eight out of ten ones that come here with overheating problems. First thing I do is use my block leak test. Find out, yep, the head gasket's blowing. I say just get rid of the car. Don't go any further. Yeah, they look cute. That's how they sold 1.3 million of these clunkers. But man, <laughs> looks can be deceiving in this case. Aside from the engines blowing head gasket, the automatic transmissions were basically garbage. One, they could barely get out of their own way. Even though they kept trying to make the engines a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger, they never were all that fast, but Americans mainly drive automatic transmission. And this car, man, it had one clunker transmission. This particular one, the 2003 PT Cruiser, has a measly little four-speed automatic. It's three speeds with an overdrive on it. Even though they don't have much acceleration, they don't get very good gas mileage for a car this size either. This particular one gets in the teens in stop and go traffic. It's about 18 miles a gallon. Now Chrysler's quality control, especially the ones made in Mexico, hey, it's notorious for being horrible. Those Dodge Neons were made in them. They were hard. This is no exception. And if you ever made the mistake of buying a faster one, the one that's turbocharged, whoo, that just turbocharges the head gasket blowing faster. That head gasket will blow so fast with the turbocharger around them, I've seen them go with as little as 40,000 miles, and there goes the engine. Basically, it comes back to pretty much a Chrysler paradigm. They often make good looking cars that just fall apart. <laughs> you want a lawn ornament? Hey, park it on your front lawn, it looks cool, you know? But driving it every day for hundreds of thousands of miles, you can forget that, unless you got deep pockets to keep fixing it. Heck, even the heaters on these things break down. They use the cheaper heater core and the stupid things either clog up or leak and you gotta tear the whole dash apart to replace them. And here's the part I really don't understand. When this thing was brand new, a base model was $3,000 more than a four-door Toyota Corolla. Yeah, back then the Corolla didn't have the cool gangster styling of this PT Cruiser, but it would run circles around one of these things. There you go, three, four hundred thousand miles or more, and this thing, gee, you're lucky if you get 80 or 90 before the engine blows. If you ever owned a Chrysler Neon, you were probably smart enough to realize I'm not going to buy its replacement because the original one was bad enough. They were handy. Seats go down in the back. You got all kinds of space to throw crap in like my customer has all their junk in there. It makes a big locker, good storage area, but has a vehicle for dependable transportation. This is one of the last things you'd ever want to buy. Now this one's got 118,000 miles and believe me, it's on its last legs. We'll start it up. You can hear. Squeaking there and in the back. You can hear the muffler vibrating. <laughs> they just had poor, cheap build quality. Anybody in their right mind would say, this is 
North American Car of the Year, one of the top 10 vehicles of that year. They got rocks in their head, at least if they were honest. No, I mean, if they're on the old payola, well, what the heck? <laughs> a lot of people do that these days, old Scotty does. They tell you the truth about these things. I have no ulterior motives other than showing people what's out there, what's good, what's bad. Over the years, I've had a lot of women buy these because they thought they looked cute, just like the minis. They buy them because they think they look cute, only to find out that cuteness is hiding an endless money pit under the hood. Six months ago, I had a customer buy a used one, and it was a convertible. They actually turned some of these into convertibles. He had just bought the vehicle for like $900. Brought it to me a couple months after he bought it, said, what's wrong? And there it was, a typical PT Cruiser. The head gasket was blowing, the engine was overheating. He put some of the sealer in it. He bought it at AutoZone. Worked pretty good, the bar sealer for head gasket leaks, and just got rid of the thing. He said, Sure, I'm not going any further on that. And you can even see, look in here, it's a small engine, but there isn't much working room. And these plastic intake manifolds, they crack and warp all the time. Sides from the engine head gaskets blowing, and their air conditioning compressors, they're notorious clunkers that break down after a short period of time. Hey, these things were made in Mexico. You think at least they'd have good air conditioners. It gets hot down there, you know? It's like ages ago. The Germans, their cars had horrible air conditioning systems. A hot day in Dusseldorf is probably like 75 degrees. Now the Germans make better air conditioning systems, no arguing that. But this, hey, supposedly an American car. You'd think they could have put good AC in it, but no, it was just the usual Chrysler crap that would blow up. And the compressors would blow up long before their time. The condensers they used on them were a little bit too small, so they didn't cool it down right, so the compressors would always run hotter than other cars and then go out. I've seen that so many times, not just in the PT Cruiser, but in many Chrysler products. They try to make them too cheap to save money, then they don't hold up over time. In this case, it's a truism. Marketing trumped engineering and manufacturing in these PT Cruiser. So don't be suckered by, oh look, it's a cute little car. Maybe I'll get one for my kid to go to high school in. Don't. The engine problems, the transmission problems, the air conditioning problems, the heating problems, the electrical problems that these things had. It's truly amazing that Chrysler suckered 1.3 million people to buy these things. Now eventually they stopped making them in 2009. People wised up and I guess Chrysler figured, hey, the jig's up. We can't fool people anymore. They have such a bad reputation. Nobody's going to be buying these things anymore. These SUV type vehicles, crossovers, they're so popular these days. To fail at selling a model? That tells you there were problems and problems on top of problems with these PT Cruisers. Which leads me to the old joke, why did they make a PT Cruiser so it could comfortably hold five people? Well that's so four of them could get out and push it while the fifth person steers the car to the nearest garage. So now you know the truth about the PT Cruiser and why you'd really have to be out of your mind to buy one of these things used today. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Average Joe 50 says, Scotty, watch your show, learned a lot. It's nice to see an honest mechanic. There's a lot of junk out there. I'm thinking about getting another vehicle. I got three choices, a 3.6 liter Ford Edge, 4.0 Nissan Frontier, and a Honda CRV EXL. All right, get the Honda, hands down. That's better than any of those by far. Those are, out of those three, that is the most wise choice. I've got customers with CRVs that have 400 something thousand miles on them. They're still running down the road. Yeah, they might make a little noise and bounce around a bit, but they're still going down the road with original engines, original transmissions. Get the Honda CRV. Those things really can last a long time. Time. And you didn't say whether you get new or used, but you know, if you're talking about buying new, definitely get the Honda because it can just last and last. I like the RAV4s too, but the CRV and the RAV4, they're kind of neck and neck. They're pretty good vehicles. If you like the CRV, go ahead and get it. Don't get the other one, especially not the Nissan. They don't hold up. And the Ford Edge is a decent vehicle, but it's not going to last near as long as the CRV will. Baba42 says, I got an 08 Trailblazer with a bad wheel bearing in the front driver's side. I replace and still have a noise. All right, <laughs> that's the problem with noises, you know? <laughs> you never know exactly where to come from. I've had customers say, hey, I got this noise in the front, and then I find out that it's a wheel bearing in the back that's making a noise. Noise travels around. So what you want to do is, I got a video, finding the source of car noises. What I use is this 
sound listening machine, four sending units. They're like little transmitters and they have magnets and straps on them. You put them in different areas of the car. Then the receiving unit, which is like a radio, is in the car and you wear headphones and it's got clicks that go one, two, three, four. So you can go from each sending unit to hear where the noise is coming from. Then you know. With yours, it could very well be that the other wheel bearings weren't too or that that was the noise in the first place. That's why if you really want to fix a noise, your best to pinpoint it perfectly before you start. And the problem with wheel bearings are a lot of people say, well, I jacked up now, I pulled the wheel, it didn't wobble, so the wheel bearings okay. Ah, that's a mistake. Because wheel bearings, when they first wear and first start to make noise, a lot of times they will have no play at all. And they'll only make noise when you're on the road driving with the weight of the car on. They won't even make a noise when you jack it up and spin it. So, when you got a listening device, you can hook it up, drive it down the road with the weight of the car on it, you can tell which side is making a noise and fix that side. So, I'd say have that done first. And if somebody puts it on the other side and says the noise is coming from the other side, then change the other wheel bearing too. So, if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.